We are now joined by senior guard Ari McDonald at the University of Arizona. We'll go straight to questions. Troy, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Ari. Troy, uh, Troy Hutchison, All Sports Tucson. Um, as you look back through not only this season, but your Arizona career, what are you going to remember most about this team and your teammates? What I remember most is just how strong they are. Um, you know, uh, no matter what situation you put it through adversity, I mean, myself, my teammates, we always fought the coaches. Um, man, just a, a good group of ladies that I played with. Uh, yeah, um, and I'll remember most is this ride. I mean, we had a great run in NCAA tournament. Um, we accomplished a lot that many didn't think we could do. And, um, you know, it was tough, but um, I'm very proud of my teammates. Our next question comes from PJ Brown. PJ, go ahead. Hi, Ari. It's PJ from the Arizona Daily Star. Hope you can hear me. Um, what in that last second when you took that shot? Can you walk us through what what was going on? What what you saw? Um, I knew it was about six point one seconds left. Maybe um, I got denied hard. Um, I tried to turn the corner. They sent three at me. Um, I took a tough contested shot, but, I mean, it didn't fall. So that's what I remember. Our next question comes from Michelle Smith with the Pac12.com. Michelle, go ahead. Eric, congratulations on a great run. Um, this game was back and forth. They would make a run, push out, get a little distance, and then you guys would push back. Where were you finding that? Where were you finding that energy to keep coming back? Every time it looked like they might, they might really push away from you guys. Yeah, um, it started with Shayna and Bindu. Um, they came up big for a second half, pressuring the ball, getting key steals. Um, I mean, probably their best defensive efforts all season. Um, I'm really proud of them. Uh, Shayna gave us a lot of energy today. It's probably one of her best games, and um, she kind of she had us afloat in the second half. Our next question comes from Danny Thompson. Danny, go ahead. Ari, Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion, outstanding game, and outstanding season. As you look back on it, this entire season, what is the one? What are some of the things you learned about yourself and learned about your teammates in a year that was not normal compared to most circumstances type years? What I learned about myself and my teammates is that you know um, we have thick skin. We're very we have mental toughness, and you you sh it showed like throughout this tournament. Um, before we got here from the start, Coach Barnes says the two teams that play for the championship. Those are the teams that, that that are mentally tough, and I think we showed that. Um, I think that you know we showed that we had a lot of growth over these last couple of years. Just Coach Barnes bringing in the player, the players that are willing to work, um, that are competitive, and um, you know that helped our culture change tremendously. So I mean, I'm just really proud of these ladies, and I'm th very thankful for them and the coaches. Our next question comes from Ariel Chambers. Ariel, go ahead. Hi. It's Arielle Chambers from Highlight Her. Um, first of all, so proud of you, Ari. Um, but many want, want to know how you did it, but I want to know what you did it for or who you did it for. Yeah, um, every time I step on, uh, put on my shoes and step on the court, um, I do it for my grandfather. Um, I know that, you know, despite the outcome of today, he'll be really proud. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do it for. And just for my, my parents, uh, the rest of my family, um, the sacrifices, you know. Um, so when I lace my shoes up, I just go hard for them. Our next question comes from Howard. Howard, go ahead. Harry, congratulations on a great season. I, I know it's still in the moment for you, but obviously you know the impact you have had on this Arizona program. Uh, the way in which it will largely be defined by what you've done going forward. Um, what does that mean to you, and how do you plan to help reinforce the kind of culture you have helped to build here over your time? Um, you know, my time in Arizona means a lot to me, what I've accomplished, what my teammates accomplished, and just the legacy I want to leave uh, once I'm gone is that, um, you know, work hard, uh, don't listen to the naysayers, focus on your course. I mean, your journey is different from, you know, your peers. So just keep working on you, stay grounded, uh, stay humble, keep God first, and just, just continue to work hard and you'll be successful. 
Our next question comes from Haley. Haley, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Ari. Haley McGoldrick from Sportsnet. Through this whole journey, it's been you and Coach Barnes. You've done this together. You moved to Arizona with her. What does it mean for you to make history for this Arizona program with her trusting your leadership to lead this team and also for you to trust in her? It means a lot. Um, our relationship was built on trust, and um, we're both, we both value uh, being relational, and um, that means a lot, and you know, she's helped me grow. I think I've helped her grow in many ways as well. And um, I just, I, I'm just thankful for her. She gave me the key. She really trusted me uh, coming in. She told me what my role would be uh, on the team. And um, yeah, um, I'm just really thankful for her. Um, she's put me in great positions and she's helped contribute to my success. Our next question will come from Javier. Javier, go ahead. Uh, Javier Morales, All Sports Tucson. Um, Harry, uh, you know, you lost this game, but the mark you leave on this program going forward, what are your thoughts about how you, you know, what you left, the, your legacy with uh, Arizona? Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Javier. You, you, the, the game is lost today, but, the, the, you know, going forward, the, the mark you left on this program will pay dividends for Adia. What are your thoughts about that? Um, you know, um, I'm just really proud of my teammates. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish, although we didn't get the outcome, you know, we wanted. Um, I'm just I'm just proud of my teammates, and, I mean, this should motivate them coming in next year, this momentum, um, just looking back on what we did and that the sky's the limit, and just to stay together. I mean, this is definitely, this will make them hungry. This will make me hungry um, in our basketball journeys. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited, you know, for what we accomplished this year in just so little time, and, it's, and especially in this weird year. But I'm very thankful. Our next question will come from Kyle Ducker with The Athletic. Kyle, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, the, the theme sort of that it developed in this tournament and then going into this Final Four was sort of people not believing, people not talking about you, even to the exclusion of you all from that video in the Final Four. How, what level of pride is there as you exit, even with the loss, knowing that sort of everyone is talking about you individually, talking about your program, talking about your coach, that, that everybody's kind of will remember this Arizona team? Yeah, uh, we're walking out of here. We're leaving San Antonio with a lot of pride. We're going to walk out of here and leave with our heads up, um, just knowing how far we came, um, how far we've come over, uh, as a program and as individuals. I mean, we have nothing to hang our heads for. I mean, we competed. We battled. I mean, we just lost to a very great uh, team, uh, an experienced team with talented players in all positions, and they, they're led by a, a, a pioneer to the game. And so, I mean – we just got to look back and we just got to, you know, just look at the positives and just look how far we've come. Our next question will come from Carter Hill. Carter, go ahead. Hi, Carter Hill with fifth quarter. Congratulations on a great season. Uh, just kind of piggybacking off of an earlier one. You know, it looks like coach came up to you and kind of put her arm around you after that, you know, that last possession. What did she say to you in that moment? Just uh, to pick my head up, um, you know, um, and that she trusts me uh, to put the team on my back and um, ride or die. And um, just saying how proud she was of us and how far we came. Our next question will come from Paul. Paul, go ahead. Hi, Paul Cicala from KVOA News 4 Tucson. Congrats on, on a great career, Mary. Um, my question is, uh, you know, you talked about how close you are with your family, and we know that they were all there representing Fresno Strong. Um, what's it going to mean for you after all this time in the bubble, now being able to, to leave after this press conference and be able to give your family a big hug and embrace them? What type of emotions do you feel like you're going to have? Um, I'll probably cry. <laughs> um, you know, tears of uh, happiness, but also, you know, sad, um, you know, especially after this loss. But, um, yeah, the, I mean, although we lost, I mean, we still, you know, we still got work to do. We still got to keep working on our game. So, I mean, but it'd definitely be exciting to actually see my family and actually, like, hug them. 
We have time for two more questions. The next one comes from Andrea. Andrea, go ahead. Yeah, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. Congrats on a great season, Ari. I'm just wondering, the way Stanford played you defensively tonight, was it much different from the first two times that you all played, or was it similar? I think it was similar. Um, you know, uh, having Anna Wilson on me, um, you know, them jumping at everything, uh, just making it kind of difficult for me. So, I mean, I'll pretty much say it was the same, uh, just more physical this time. Our final question for Ariel will come from Christina. Christina, go ahead. Get the outcome that you wanted, but how will you use this moment to kind of motivate you for your next chapter? Just to keep working on my game, uh, sharpen my game some more, um, and just to keep my head up and just always remind myself the sky's the limit and um, just keep working hard and just making people alongside of you better. Ari, thanks for your time this evening. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Well, next here from head coach Adia Barnes. If you'd like to ask her a question, please use your raise hand function now. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation first before asking your question. Thanks for joining us this yeah. evening, Coach. Our first question will come from Lindsay with USA Today. Lindsay, go ahead. Hi, Adia. Hi. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Congrats on an incredible season and an amazing run. Um, you guys turned the you turned Stanford over so much, 21 times, but you could only turn that into 12 points. Do you think you were tight? Do you think you didn't take great shots, or what was going on? I think um, yeah, we definitely didn't convert on um, the turnovers. I think that we were just taking some quick shots. I think um, taking some four shots, but those shots had been falling prior to this game. So, um, you, you know, they just didn't fall today. You know, we shot 29% from the field and, and we were missing a lot around the rim, a lot of chippies, a lot of floaters, a lot of um, pull-ups and just taking um, the shots off balance. And those are things we don't convert on. So we had to turn them over 21 times. We have to be able to convert. Um, but if you would have told me that we're going to lose by, you know, 20 rebounds, we're going to be down by 20 rebounds on the boards and, and shoot 28%, I would have told you we would have lost by 30. So um, against great teams like Stanford, we have to be a little bit better at the small things. It doesn't ever come down to the last shot. It comes out down to the missed free throws down the stretch. It comes down to the foul on the three-point shot. It comes down to getting the turnovers and not converting. So it's those things. It's never the last play. Um, but, you know, it obviously just stings pretty bad. Our next question comes from PJ Brown. PJ, unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Dale, this is TJ from the Arizona Daily Star. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. It's a little loud here. It's hard, so I might be screaming. But okay. um, I know this was a tough loss, but if you can take a moment and think about not just this tournament run, but your whole season and, and what this team has accomplished what does that mean to you and how special is this team um this team is so special i am so proud um you know we fought like we weren't the best team in the tournament um we no one thought we'd be here we believed in each other uh, we didn't play a great game but we battled we played our hearts out and we came within one possession um, it doesn't come to down, to down to the last possession. It comes down to all the little things. And the margin of error is so slim in a championship game. And this is uncharted territory for the Wildcats. Our program hadn't been to the tournament in 15 years, 16 years. And we've never played in the championship game. So were we a little tight? Yeah. Um, were we not hitting shots? Yeah. Um, but I mean, we fought. We played great defense. I mean, we, we did some good things. But Stanford's such a good team with so much depth, um, so many weapons offensively. Um, they isolated us inside. They did some things that were really tough for us to guard. Um, and but I'm I'm not ashamed. Like we made it to the championship game. We had we came within a basket of winning a national championship. So I'm proud. Um, 
And you know, we can. It's it's hard. It, it does hurt. Like my heart's broken, but I can't ask for anything more of this team. Um, to shoot 28% and come within one shot and shoot 27% from the three and lose by one point. Um, we did some other things really well, so I'm proud. Um, no one thought we'd be playing a championship game, no one. So, um, you know, we did. they did everything I asked. It's just the shots didn't fall and the little things we weren't able to execute on. Our next question comes from Paul. Paul, go ahead. Hi, Adia. Paul Sikala from KVOA News 4 Tucson. Congratulations again for such an amazing year. Um, in the final play that you drew up, um, were there, we all, everybody knew it was going to go to Ari McDonald, but were there any other options explored um, at that point to, for her to dish it off or anything, or was it all Ari or nothing? No, it was going to be Ari or nothing, just because if you look at the game, um, really Ari was the one scoring. Um, so, you know, as my decision as a coach is, I, and I knew she was going to be doubled, um, but, you know, running a, a screen-to-screener type action um, was the best option. But it wasn't like in this game we we were hitting from the three, so there's an option for a three-pointer in that um, situation, but we needed, we needed a two. And so we knew she would catch it on the three-point line, um, and that's what happened. But they did a really good job of denying us after the screen and we they forced us to catch the ball really high and then when Ari went to drive we know she can go downhill because there's plenty of time we we work on that a lot in practice the special situations and but she was pretty much triple teamed and she couldn't go downhill but I mean at that point you know we've been on Ari's back for the whole tournament so like she's got to take that shot and um you know unfortunately it still had a chance of going in but I she's I have to put the ball in her hands um, in that situation because she's one of the reasons why we're here. Our next question comes from Nancy Armour with USA Today. Unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Adia. I hope you can hear me. Um, you mentioned about how proud you are of your team. Nobody expected you to get here. What is this going to do for you going forward? You know, you're, you've upped the bar so much. What, what kind of dividends is this going to pay off in the coming years? Um, it's hard to even have sight of that right now just because, like, I'm in the moment, I'm just a little bit <laughs> devastated. Um, but, I mean, for our players, they've set the foundation. Um, they are the reason why we're here. And, you know, we didn't get to do this last year, so Dominique, Amari, TT, all those players from last year, we didn't get to go to the tournament. So we're fortunate and blessed to be playing. Um, this team with Aerie, and with Shayna and with Bendu, Sam, Kate, Lauren, Helena, um, Trinity, everybody, the whole team from 1 to 14, we fought to get here. So the bar is high. The standard is high once you come this far. So once you've had success like this, you, um, you reach for the sky. And so you fight a little bit more. And, um, you know, we have some players, some key players returning next year. And now this is going to be where you want to go. Um, this is going to be what we're trying to do. So proud um, because they've done this. They got us here. And now going to the tournament, like we before the goal was going to the tournament um, or winning a Pac-12 championship. Now we played for the national championship, which not a lot of teams can say they've done that. Not a lot of teams have gone this far. There's two. And the reality is with this season, one person is going to walk away happy with the season and their national champions, and everybody else is going to walk away um, disappointed. And we are um, we got this close, so definitely disappointed. And I wanted to hoist the trophy and uh, make history, and it would have been almost next to a miracle for us to do that. But, um, you know, we had an opportunity to do that. And um, that's all I could ask for. And so the bar is high. Uh, we want to come back here. I'm trying to... Build a program like Tara has. Build a program like Gino and Don and all the other, um, you know, trailblazers in this profession. So I don't want to, I'm not satisfied with just being here, being in the tournament. I want this to be, I want to build a program where we're, you're surprised when they don't win. Like when you look at Tara or Gino or Don, it's a surprise if they don't win a championship. It's a disappointment. It's a, you know, it's a tough season that happens. So I don't want to just come here once and be done. I, I want to be back here. And I think that, in the future, Arizona will be back. Our next question comes from Jillian. Jillian, go ahead. 
Hi, Coach Jillian Brass from New York Times. Um, this was a very tight game. What do you think it says about the Pac-12 conference, and what does it mean for two Pac-12 teams to have had this close of a game on a national stage? It means that the Pac-12 is the best conference in the country, and it, it was evident right now. Um, two very good teams competing at the, on the biggest stage for women's basketball. But we've always said it's the best conference. I know Tara's been saying this a long time. So I think that it's time for people to respect the Pac-12 more, um, start paying attention, um, know who our players are, start watching us. I know on the East Coast when we play at 7 or 8 at night, it's really late. But to start, um, start paying attention, we have some of the best players in the country. We play some of the best basketball. And it's, it's a dominant conference. Um, and to, to have the winner of the Pac-12, you know, be the champion, um, national champion, it's pretty amazing. We finished second, and we finished second nationally right now. So I think it says a lot about our conference, and we continue just to, to have success in the tournament year in and year out. Our next question comes from Kim Doss. Kim, go ahead. This is Kim from Arizona Desert Swarm, Medea. Um, Shana, how, how much she raised her game today and the entire tournament and what it says about next year when Ari's gone and you need her more. For sure. Um, you know, Shana had her best game of the year. She came, she came in today, gave us a spark, and played her heart out defensively, offensively. Um, just she did uh, seven rebounds. I mean, three steals. Shayna was phenomenal. Without Shayna playing the way she did, we wouldn't have even came down to last possession. So um, you know, Ari passing the baton to to Shayna. Um, you know, Shayna's returning. So you know, we'll have some some good players returning. Lauren's a freshman. Um, Kate's returning. Bindu's returning. So so Ari Ari's not going to be here, and um, possibly Trinity, Trinity and Sam. But we have a good nucleus, and they have this experience, and they've had a taste of this success. So now they can be the leaders um, next year for everybody else and show what the standard is and what it takes to get here. It takes a little bit more. It takes um, another level in the preseason, off season to be able to win championships. And we're not quite there yet, but we're going to be there. Um, and, you know, so I'm very proud of Shane and the way she played. Everybody, Ben do. Um, Sam wasn't her best night offensively, but she played great defense. We just needed a little bit more from a couple more people to be able to win this game. Our next question comes from Andrea. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, Andrea Adelson Hi. with ESPN.com. I'm wondering what Stanford did early on with Ari to maybe get her a little bit off her rhythm, but then what it said about her uh, to find that rhythm late in the game and give you a chance to win. Well, if you look at the game the whole time, I think they forced her to take, they, they were allowing tough threes. Uh, they didn't ever give her space. Um, she was just maneuvering and finding ways, ways to go downhill, but a lot of bodies in the paint. So every time she went downhill, there was posts in the paint or weak side help. Um, and we kind of expected that. We knew that. We knew that we had to be really good in transition. We knew that we'd have to turn them over and score, but we weren't able to turn them over and convert. So playing in the quarter court against Stanford is not an advantage for Arizona. Going downhill, playing fast in transition, um, our defense creating our offense is an advantage for Arizona. And we were just weren't able to convert on some of those things. So very hard, very hard when we're in the half court because then a lot of attention's on Ari and a lot of people, I think they forced her into tough shots. The reality is... The last couple of games, she was making those tough shots. Um, we took a lot of quick shots that were hard, took a lot of off-balance shots, um, but they just didn't fall. Uh, very hard to shoot 29%, 27% from the three and win a national championship game. We had to have some more shots fall, and that's all. Sorry, that's my baby in the background. Our next question will come from Troy. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, Adia. Troy Hutchison, All, Spar uh, All Sports Tucson. Uh, this is going to be a two-part question. Okay. Um, first, what will you remember about this team? And secondly, does this run cement Aries' legacy as the best player in program history? Yeah, for sure. So Ari, um, hands down, no doubt, is the best player in Arizona's history. Um, she was a lot better than I ever was. <laughs> so, and the fact that I held those records for so long, it doesn't mean a lot because that means we weren't that good for a long time. So Aerie just shattered everything. A better player than I could have ever been. Um, led us to the national championship game when no one would have thought that. 
So Ari was phenomenal, definitely the best player in Arizona history. And I'm proud that I coached her. I'm proud she chose me twice. I'm proud she came to Arizona to do something special when we weren't good. Um, we were probably 300 something in RPI. And for her to come here and then come back when she could have gone pro and then to lead us to national championship and be one shot away from winning it all, I mean, she's amazing. Um, what was your other question? Hold on, let me get back to I it. Forgot, Hold sorry. on one quick second. Let's go to Jay and then we'll come back. Okay, sorry, I forgot the second part. Jay, go I ahead. Hi, Adia. Jay Gonzalez, Hi. Fox Sports 1450. Um, there were three or four times in the game that it looked like Stanford was going to get away from you. They went up by nine. I think one time they were up by 11. What What did you feel you had to do at that point? What did you say to your team well, we to just, not let it get away from you? It had to make a couple of defensive adjustments. Um, we were getting lost a couple of times on some specific scout-specific actions that when we didn't execute it, they, they scored. Um, so it just had to be a little bit better with some actions. Um, and then I think that we did that. And then we definitely put a little bit more pressure, um, tried to help from some different areas, which it's usually very hard. I mean, Stanford usually does not shoot, uh, you know, four for 14, 29% from the three. So I think we forced them into to taking some, um, you know, contested shots. But I think we guarded some things really well. But um, yeah, just kind of some miscommunication on a couple of things, but it's not really what we do. So a little bit of mental lapse on some things, but I mean, nothing's perfect. It doesn't come down to the last thing. It comes down to when I look at why we lost the game, um, second chance points, um, you know, not turning them over, not not converting on the turnovers, and just the, making free throws. So that's the difference in the game. Down the stretch, we missed some key free throws. So um, we would have done those things, we would have won, even shooting 28% and um, six for 22 from the three. So we had a chance because we played some very good defense today. Okay, we have Troy back for the other okay, part of that. Sorry, question. sorry, Troy. No problem. So what will you remember most about this team and this season? Just the way that we fought, the way that we um, just approached things, the way they looked at me in my eyes and believed in the things I said and spoke my language and played their hearts out. I think when you're a coach and your team plays their hearts out for you, there's a good connection. I think if you look around the country, there's a lot of teams that don't play hard for their coaches that don't listen. They will run through a wall for me. And they did that and they fought and they played their hearts out. They retired a little bit, but they just found a way to get back in the game. So as a coach, I'm, I'm happy, I'm satisfied. Um, this was a hard year. Um, it was a hard year, it was a COVID year. It was a year we didn't get team bonding a lot. We were on lockdown in hotels most of the year. You know, we've been here three weeks, pretty much on lockdown. It is hard mentally for players, but they stuck together. They fought. They were resilient. They handled adversity, and they didn't complain. They didn't, um, you know, second-guess things. You know, we uh, we do a lot. Of, we ask of a lot. I ask of a lot for them um, off the court, on the court. We do a lot at Arizona, whether it's community service, a little less this year because of COVID, but tons of skill work. Um, a lot of little things, and they did it, and they never complained. They never questioned the things I asked them to do. So I'll remember just their fight. I'll re they always say, um, we have that dog mentality. I remember that. I'll remember how when everybody around the country didn't believe in us and count us out, we believed in each other, and we, we did that. Um, we celebrated each other. We fought, and we made it to the championship game when we're not the best team in the country. We're not the deepest team. We're not the tallest team. We're not the best team. But we fought and we played some good defense. I think we played some of the best defense in the country. Um, and so that's just want and that's heart. Um, but that's something you can control. So just proud of this team and our resiliency, our mental toughness, our want to win, and this the, the way they fought for me. Um, they never had a doubt. They look me in the eyes and fight. And, and um, you know, I, I, just, I love them. I wouldn't ask for anything. I wouldn't change anybody. I wouldn't get bigger. I wouldn't change my players. Don't care if we can't shoot here. Don't care if we can't post up there. I don't care because we fight, and that's all I can ask. The next question will come from Jamal. Jamal, go ahead. Uh, Jamal Murphy, the undefeated. Uh, coach, congratulations on a great Thank tournament, you. a great season. Thank you. Um, you know, obviously, Arizona has made its mark on the court, but you also, you also made your mark as a coach and as an individual. 
Um, you were outspoken about some very important issues. I, I was wondering, you know, did it take time for you to, de to develop your voice in that way? Have you always been like that? No, or, I... You know, why did you speak out? Um, I, just because I'm me, it's like... And, um, sometimes I'm a little too transparent. I think we kind of saw that the other day on the court, but I do what I feel for my team, and I, that's all I care about. Um, don't care about the other stuff. I, I don't know. I just, if I'm passionate about something and I believe it, I'm going to talk about it. Um, I just, um, I don't know. It's just who I am. And sometimes it's, you know, your biggest strength is sometimes your biggest weakness. But there's some things, I represent a lot of things today. You know, um, I look back at my journey with this team. I had a baby right when season started and took like a week off. Um, it says I took a month off, but I did not. Um, like I was on Zoom calls four days after having a C-section. So um, it was hard, but my teammate, my team loved on me and they, uh, I missed a couple weeks. I got a little sick and they fought for me. I came back, uh, they were patient. Um, you know, I just, um, I'm happy. So I represented moms. Um, I have a baby here and here crying ready to feed. Um, I represent moms. You can be coached. You can be at an elite level. You can do it. You just have to have a village like I do. I represent black females. Don't get here too often and don't get opportunities. Um, but, you know, we ha I had an opportunity today on the biggest stage and represented a lot. I've coached against one of the best teams in the, once one of the best coaches in the world, um, who unfortunately I have to coach against during the Pac-12 all the time, but also who mentors me and who I can call for advice, like who cares about my, me and women's basketball, that's Coach Tara Vanderveer. But represent a lot of things. I want women to be successful as coaches. There was two women coaching on the biggest stage today, myself and Tara, and I think that's also meaningful for women's basketball. But there was a lot of um, hats to, to fill. Um, but former players need to get into coaching. We need development for coaching um, at other levels, and we need to develop like, future coaches and former players because it says a lot when a player has been where these players want to go. You can't teach that. That's why Don Staley has so much success. I mean, who wouldn't want to play for the Olympic head coach and who was one of the best point guards ever? Who wouldn't want to go play there? You know, who doesn't want to go play for a, um, you know, a, a pioneer, a trailblazer in women's basketball, Tarvin, Hall of Famer, the most winningest coach. So um, we have phenomenal women. They represent so much. So, um, you know, our, it's just the beginning for Arizona. I'm young. I have a lot of coaching ahead of me. You know, Tara's won like 1,000, 1,100 more games than me. So I have a long way to go. She's been here many times. Her team's more experienced in these settings. But I'm just proud of what we did, what I was able to represent. And I can tell you all those things, representing mom, former player, you know, um, uh, a woman of color. It's just these things made me um, coach a little harder and wanted a little bit more just because I received so much love from everybody. And so many texts. I think all of my former WNBA friends, everybody texted me. Um, and they were rooting for me, so I wanted it bad for so many reasons. And I wasn't able to get it done. I'm sad. But, um, but you know. We're going to squeeze in one final question from Michelle. Michelle, go ahead. Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. It's a hell of a run, Dia. Let me ask you about Tara really okay. quick. 29 years between titles, the <laughs> longest gap between titles in Division I collegiate sports history. Mm -hmm. What kind of perseverance, resilience does it take to run a program to a lot of Final Fours, to a lot of conference championships, and then after almost three decades win another title? Uh, I mean, it means so much. The fact that I, th I think nowadays if you look at coaching, like to even have the opportunity to coach that long, at one place means you're so successful. I mean, to be at the same school for so many years and have like sustained success, it just shows what a phenomenal coach she is. And so much time in between, the fact that she's still coaching at this level and having so so much success, it speaks volumes to her and who she is and, and what she does. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm very happy for Tara. I think um, she's amazing. Um, she's helped me since I became the coach at Arizona. She's believed in me and she's given me advice. She's given me constructive criticism. Uh, she's always cheering for me. She always says she cheers for me except for one time in the year when we play each other. But um, it means a lot. Like she's one of the best there is. And um, I, I you know I think that she's, unfortunately for us, she's gonna be coaching a lot longer. I don't think she's gonna hang it up yet because she just has a phenomenal class coming in next year along with Gino and some of 
the incredible in Dawn. Um, they have amazing classes coming in next year, so they'll be back here, I'm sure. But yeah, it means a lot. It's been so many years in between, and for her to be so successful, it just shows um, what a great coach she is. And so, um, you know, like I think for me as a young coach to be able to coach against her in our conference, it makes me better. I think to be the best, you got to play against the best and coach against the best. And um, I get to do that against a lot of great coaches in our conference. So I'm happy for Stanford. They're a phenomenal team. It was really hard for us to do certain, some some things that we normally do. Um, and she's got a great team, and um, they're going to be good for a lot longer. Coach, thank you for your time this evening. Congratulations on a great season. Look forward to seeing you here next year. Thank you. And, and go enjoy your family. Thanks. Thank you all for joining us this evening. This ends our press conference. A recording of this press conference will be posted in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Thank you for joining us and have a happy Easter.
and I will get to as many of you as I can. We are now joined by head coach Tara Vanderveer. First question is from Michelle. Michelle, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Tara, Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Congratulations. Thank you, Michelle. So if back in 1992, you had known <laughs> <laughs> that it would be 29 years before you would be climbing up that ladder and cutting the net down again, would you have imagined, no way will I still be coaching by then? You know, I, I never really thought about it. And this isn't why I coach. Um, I really, I just, I want to be a teacher and, and, and just, you know, each year is a great year. Uh, and I enjoy working with uh, all of our players. Um, but I guess the first thing I just want to say is, I just want to congratulate Arizona on a great year, uh, great job that they did. They really, really had a great tournament. And I'm really excited to take the uh, trophy back to the Pac-12. Uh, and also I want to thank the Pac-12 coaches and every university in the Pac-12 for the commitment to women's basketball, Pac-12 networks, and the great coaches that we have in our league uh, got us ready for this moment. And it was, uh, it was a, a very, very tough tournament um, to play uh, the three games in a week, um, you know, to deal with all the COVID stuff. I'm so proud of our team. Next question is from Matthew. Matthew, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Congratulations, Coach. I know you've said it a few times over the season, but just to reiterate, you know, the leadership of some of the players who maybe mm -hmm. don't play a ton of minutes, someone like Alyssa Jerome and what they did through what was a very long slog at different points throughout the season. Alyssa Jerome is amazing. Uh, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. The leadership, Anna Wilson, Alyssa Jerome, Kiana, uh, the things that they did uh, to keep it together. Uh, I think, honestly, the adversity that we faced off the court helped us on the court. And I mean, today's game, uh, we, we got uh, just, you know, great performance from Haley and Cam and Lexi, uh, Ashton helped us. And, you know, they really uh, locked down on key, but she stayed with things. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of this team, not for just their basketball, but for uh, being able to get through this COVID and be so mature. Uh, you know, not have anyone test positive uh, on our team through the th whole winter, uh, it's awesome. Next question is from Doug. Doug, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Coach, Doug Farmer, the Associated Press. Congrats on the victory Thank tonight. you, Doug. Thank you. So I'm curious, or let me say first, I thought it was really neat that you were at the bottom of the ladder hugging each one of your players and, and support staff before they went up there, which I thought was a really neat touch. My question is similar to what Michelle asked. I mean, 29 years ago, you last won the title. This group got another one for you. What does it mean to, to get this third championship and to have gone through what you've gone through for so many years and have so many great teams that could have won it, but to finally get this Right. One? You know, I really feel like, Doug, we won this for all of the great players that have played at Stanford. You know, going back to, uh, you know, we, we went to three Elite Eights and never made it to the Final Four with great players like Candace Wiggins, um, Brooke uh, Smith, um, you know, Jillian Harmon. We... Uh, then we got to the Final Four, and, you know, with Canis and Roz and Neca and Cheney and Jane Appel, and we were right here in San Antonio and had a, had the lead at halftime, um, you know, and then and Jane was playing on a broken foot, um, but even you know since then uh, going to the Final Four with uh, great players like uh, uh, Erica McCall and uh, Carly Samuelson, Carly sprains her ankle, so. Uh, I, we had some, we had some special karma going for us when we dodged the bullet against, you know, we, we had to come back against Louisville. We dodged the bullet against South, uh, South Carolina. We dodged a bullet against, uh, uh, Arizona. I just think that, you know, sometimes you just got to be lucky and I will admit it. We were, we were fortunate. We we're very fortunate to win. Next question is from Emma. Emma, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi hey, Tara, congratulations. Emma Bacheleri with Sports Illustrated. Uh, when you won in 92, you said that the, the final second of that final four game was the longest second of your life. <laughs> How did that compare to the, the second where Ari McDonald's shot was in the air tonight? You know, we didn't, it wasn't a one point game that I remember in 92. I haven't watched that game for probably, you know, 29 years, but um, you know, it's, uh, it was just, it was the longest second. Um, but, you know, uh, we had played Arizona, um, I, th I think it was three years ago at home, and 
she put up that same shot and that shot went in and then came out. Uh, this, this shot, I don't think went in, but it, we knew she was taking that shot and I think three people on the court went to her, which was a good thing. Next question is from Alex. Alex, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Alex Simon from the next year. Tara, you've spoken about all the players you've had over the years. And in particular, since winning that title in 92, how have those teams impacted you and kind of your coaching style on this journey to winning this title? You know, I really told our team before the game that, you know, um, whether we won this game or we didn't win this game, it doesn't change you fundamentally as a person. And, you know, I have I had some just fan, just fantastic Kate Starbridge team, uh, 97, where uh, we lost in the semifinals. And then, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's heartbreaking to go through that. Um, so I, I know that these women are kind of on the shoulders of those women and the former players would be so proud to be part of this team because of the resilience they've shown, because of the sisterhood that they represent um, and and I and I'm just uh, I'm just thrilled for this team, but also for all the women out there that played at Stanford. Next question is from Michelle Vogel. Michelle, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Yeah, Coach Vanderveer, congratulations. Thank um, you, Michelle. Wanted to ask you a little bit about Haley, and obviously, you know her being hurt last year and then not having a tournament, she talked about how, you know, she had to kind of dig deep and, and, mm -hmm. and come back and, and then being most outstanding player, can you just put in perspective just the journey she's had in the last year, if you will? Well, you know, Haley uh, obviously had a season ending injury last year and we didn't have training in the spring or, or training in the summer. Um, so I think what she has done is really amazing that, you know, she comes back and has, and she was a go-to player down the stretch. There's no two ways about it. When we wanted a basket, we went to Haley and she delivered. Uh, you know, there were some shots that she missed, but she was always right at the rim. And, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, that that's a young player like that. She really stepped up. Uh, she she is, what, what I think what you see with Haley is the tip of the iceberg. But I, what I really respect about what she's done is through this season, Haley has really changed in practice. Uh, she's, you know, she's a loose kind of, um, you know, fun young woman, but she gets serious in practice and she's talking and she's a very intelligent player. Um, so I, I'm really excited for her upside and I'm very happy for her to win the MVP. I actually told her, I said, Haley, step up and play the game you can at halftime. I said, you'll be the MVP and she was. Next question is from Pepper. Pepper, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Coach. Pepper Christie with the next. Congrats on the title. Thank you, now, Pepper. I'm not gonna put work. <laughs> I'm not gonna put words in your mouth again tonight. So I'll just ask, what are your thoughts on your team's defensive effort? You know, Pepper, uh, I thought our team played very well defensively. Uh, Anna Wilson is a terrific defender. Uh, I know that um, you know. Ari had 22 points, but she had to work very hard for each one of those points. And uh, I thought, uh, you know, our whole team uh, bought into playing defense. I thought we rebounded pretty well. Uh, we struggled with some turnovers, so that will give us something to work on in the spring. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Pepper. Next question is from Joey. Joey, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Coach. I'm with uh, Texas Public Radio here in San Antonio, and I wanted to ask uh, about the COVID bubble. You know, you've been in this bubble for the past three weeks. Um, you know, how does it feel being able to finally go out of it? And what are the, some of the things you all experienced within the bubble? You know, um, for our team, this was actually probably um, a little bit uh, less strict than where we are at Stanford. Um, you know, you'd be outside and people would not have masks on. Um, you know, restaurants are open and things, and that's not the way it's been for us in California. So this was not an adjustment for us at all. And uh, I think with the way um, COVID is right now, uh, you know, it's too early to relax. And I'm glad the NCAA has been very strict uh, for us because we want to be healthy. So uh, we, we've got, uh, you know, we've got to just st stay with it and um, kind of get through this time. And then hopefully our next Next year's uh, fall and winter in our tournament will be uh, back to normal. Next question is from Michael. Michael, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. 
Hi, Coach. Michael Farrar with Berg Sports Network here. As you, you've seen, the confetti was falling. The players were cut in the net. You know, your assistant coaches. What was going through your mind seeing all of them, you know, celebrate, you know, after all of you guys have been through, mm -hmm. through this whole pandemic? Um, how did it feel that it's finally done? And my second question for you, for the fans, they may not know, how tough was that Arizona team and how exciting was it to play that team tonight? Uh, the Arizona team is really tough. And again, Adia and her staff, uh, you know, Ari is like super quick. Um, you know, you could, they, they just built on their, their confidence, just built and built and built throughout the tournament. The fact that we'd beaten them twice and quite honestly in, in, in Arizona, we beat them very badly. Uh, real credit to uh, their, their team and staff. And they, they played great. Um, you know, what, what I was thinking about was, I, I can't believe it. Uh, we're just like, is this really happening? This whole year has been so weird, you know, everything about it. And you're just like, but uh, we're, I'm so excited. I'm so happy for our team, our fans, our parents, uh, you know, everything. Uh, I'm just, you know, I, don't, I think it'll really sink in tomorrow. Next question is from Cheryl. Cheryl, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Cheryl Coward, Hoop Feed. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, you did a, a pregame interview with Kevin, and you said that the last nine seconds against South Carolina it felt like a, a root canal. What did hmm. the last six seconds of this game feel like, and what were you thinking? I was back in that dentist chair, Cheryl. I mean, it was painful. You know, the fact that when we had the ball, we, we needed to hang on to it and get, a, get at least get a shot up. But, um, you know, at least we held on the ball for a while. Um, it's, uh, you know, but this is, that's the way basketball is. And if you've got a, a faint heart or weak stomach, then don't coach. Next question is from Janie. Janie, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Janie. Hi, Tara, congratulations. Uh, Janie McCauley from Associated Press. Tara, um, Kiana just, just shared a story from months ago in the fall when the group came back together and they broke quarantine. After four days, they decided to go somewhere nearby and, and have a little pickup game. And she said you were heartbroken and disappointed and the only way they could make, up, make it up to you in their minds was to come and, and win it all. And, and would you take us through that little stretch? And I know protocols were very strict at that mm -hmm. point. You weren't into Maples. And, and how much growth did you see from this, this group in terms of becoming better leaders? Like Kiana wanted to become a better leader after that. Well, w what happened, um, you know, one of the players came back and we do the five day testing, test on day one and test on day five. So when they were clear on day one, they just assumed they were clear. But then when they were positive on day five and on day four, they had gone to the gym and they, uh, you know, it, it was um, it was a breach of protocol. And I have to say that, you know, like I'm worried about it. I'm, you know, I'm not their age. And, um, you know, I just I was hurt and I was upset and I let them know that. Um, and I think, though, that 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 developed um, more trust with us, uh, you know, as a staff, with our players, and they understood that they, you know, you have to be accountable, um, you know, but since then, uh, we we did have staff test positive, uh, three staff, but no players, and I think that that, uh, that incident helped us because they were quarantined for 14 days, and that cut into our practice at the beginning of the year, and they realized I don't want to be in quarantine anymore, so... Um, but it's, uh, it, it was a t very tough year and, you know, that was just the beginning of it. But I think that that really set the tone that we're, we're said, we're going to be, we're going to be honest. We're going to be, uh, we're going to be trustworthy and we need that from all of us. So it was a, I think it was a learning experience. Next question is from Lindsay. Lindsay, go ahead and unmute yourself and say your name and affiliate. Hi, Tara. Congratulations. Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, Haley said that she thought you guys deserved some credit for grittiness tonight. And she said you and Kate are always telling them, no more Stanford nice girls. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about that? You know, I think Haley is exactly right. I said that this game was not a pretty game, but it was a gritty game. We had to dig in. You know, uh, they're very, they're very athletic. They're very quick. They're very fast. And at the, at, at this level, you know, sometimes they really let a lot of physical play go. Um, and, you know, we just, um, we, we need to, we had to toughen up. We had to dig in. And I'm really proud of our team for doing that. Uh, whether it was Anna, you know, 
you know, trying to take a charge, whether it was Lexi, uh, whether it was Haley or Key, you know, I mean, we had a lot of people on the ground and we had to battle. Um, and, you know, just, uh, it, I think our grit and resilience really um, hel helped us get, get the nets. Next question is from Nancy. Nancy, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Tara, congratulations. Um, you mentioned the, the grittiness and you know some of the determination that you all needed to have. I, is this title kind of reflective of that? Plus, also the 29 years. You know, it, it's just it's it's been a long journey on a number of different levels. It seems like mm -hmm. it, it has been. You know, I mean, I think everyone in our locker room is really ready. You know, to get home. I mean, we've been on the road. I, I don't even count the number of days, but um, you know, this this is uh, this is the time we live in and. It, it, sometimes you, you sometimes you just have to stick with things, and uh, you know, for me as a coach, uh, again, you know, you want to win a national championship. We have had shots at it. I've had heartbreak, um, you know, with with teams that had great shots at winning it, but uh, this team won, and I'm so proud of them. Uh, for you know, we might call it the COVID championship, and it might have an asterisk, but uh, it's it was tougher. It was tougher being down here. It was you know, in the very beginning, uh, I know the NCAA was like three weeks, you know, but. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we stayed in it and we found ways to um, really enjoy each other and be, uh, be excited to play. And we're, we're really happy to win this championship. Next question is from Andrea. Andrea, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com. Congratulations, Tara. Uh, specifically on the defensive effort on Airy, she mentioned that she thought you guys were more physical in this game compared to the first two. Does that just go along with what you were talking about earlier about the grittiness and trying to be maybe a little bit more physical in this game? Well, you know, I think that um, I, I think that one of the things that really, I mean, playing in the Pac-12, we got better as they got better. But in the NCAA tournament, uh, you you know this this not, this is uh, very physical, and South Carolina is very physical. Louisville is very physical. Uh, you know Missouri State is very physical. So we got more physical as the tournament went on. Next question is from Jacob. Jacob, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Jacob Rayburn, Cardinal Sports Report. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you, Jacob. Um, Something that doesn't get brought up a whole lot, but I, I know you certainly appreciate, is recruiting to Stanford, the academic standards that your recruits have to meet, and wondering just how much more special maybe that makes it to win a championship at, at Stanford. Well, you know, Jacob, my dad told me leaving Ohio State, he said, don't take the Stanford job. It's a graveyard job. But I said, Dad, we just need four and five a year. And, you know, we're so thankful for the great players that we have, uh, led by Kiana Williams, Anna Wilson, all the way down our lineup. Uh, you know, a top player in high school coming out uh, with uh, Haley Jones. And, you know, the players that we have coming in next year, we're, we're really excited about. Um, but um, I'm going to enjoy this championship with this team. And... Yes, they have the academics, but they have more than that. Um, they really have a sisterhood, and that's that's what won it for us. Next question is from Steve. Steve, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliate. Yeah, Steve Turner from the San Francisco Chronicle. One quick throwaway first, uh, Tara. Are your uh, radio announcers going to get rings? Um, I, I don't know. I've never even thought that far ahead, but I, I hope so. Yeah, okay. I hope so. Okay. Uh, if Real question is, you know, some people would say this would be a time that perhaps you would consider retirement. You go out on top. I don't get that. That's the sense that you have. But has it, has it even crossed your mind that, you know what, what more can I do? I just want another national championship. Maybe this would be a time to, to say, you know, I've done, I've done a, I've had a great career. I've done a lot. Maybe it's uh, time to ride to the sunset. Has that crossed your mind at all? Uh, not during the game, Steve, but maybe I'll think about it later. Uh, right now, I'm, I am very excited about what we accomplished, and I'm really excited about the, uh, the team that we have, uh, you know, in that locker room and the young people that are committed to Stanford. So, um, you know, I'm happy. I'm enjoying it. I, I don't know if I can go through another COVID year, so I hope everybody's wearing their mask and, uh, 
you know, just let's get better so we can get back to normal. It was, Steve, one thing, it was really exciting to have fans at our games. We have missed our fans so much. We have time for one more question, and that'll be from Chantel. Hey, Tara, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. We've talked so much this season about how the time on the road benefited your players, how they grew closer and their chemistry uh, improved because of it. But I'm curious for you as a coach, the amount of time you were able to spend with them in sort of these unique circumstances, if it changed your relationship with the players at all, or if it changed the way you were able to coach them at all with this specific group. You know, um, it was kind of interesting. In some ways, you're not spending as much time with them because you're not having meals together. You're not... You know, you're 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 always being distant. Um, so in some ways, we were more apart. But then just being around each other more. I know the the team kind of joked about the fact that we live in a dorm with their coaches. Um, but I, I would say it could go either way. And and I'd also just like to for all the participants, uh, I want to thank you for your coverage of women's basketball. And you know, we're just uh, we're so thankful for um, the opportunity to play and for you know, the opportunity to be in this tournament. And I just uh, thank you for the NCAA and uh, for running these press conferences so people can share in the joy that our team is experiencing right now. Coach, congratulations. Thank, thank you. you for your time. I've got 600 text messages. Go celebrate. Thank you. Thank you for participating in tonight's press conference. We are now joined by <clears throat> Haley Jones. And the first question is from Lindsay. Lindsay, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Haley. Lindsay Schnell from USA Today Sports. Congratulations on the title. Uh, you guys definitely turned the ball over quite a bit today, but you really took care of the glass. And I wondered how much Tara emphasized that in the scout that you needed to out-rebound them. Uh, yeah, I think rebounding is a huge emphasis for our team. And we got out-rebounded by South Carolina on uh, Friday. And that doesn't really, that hasn't really happened a lot in this past season. So recently we had to get on the glass and we had a lot of uh, timely turnovers and just turnovers throughout the game. And we knew we needed to take care of the ball better. But down the stretch, we just didn't. Um, but luckily we got on the boards, we made a point to crash the O boards, box out as much as we could on the D boards. So uh, it was just an emphasis. The, it's been an emphasis the whole season, especially in this game. <laughs> Next question is from Ann. Ann, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Haley. Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. Congratulations. Um, you weren't even close to being born the last time Stanford won a, a national championship, but you obviously came to Stanford in part because they have you have could have had a chance to play for a legend. Um, what does it mean to? to end a 29 year drought for, for Tara and you know that all these great players like the Agumakes and all these other Stanford players couldn't couldn't ever reach this point. What is it, just what does that mean to do that for her? Yeah, I mean, um, this program is what it is because of Tara. So um, the legacy that she's created and just being able to be recruited by her and now be a part of the team and then take that a step further and win a national championship after the uh, 29, year-long drought. It's just a blessing. Um, it's surreal to be here right now. I don't think it's still honestly even hit me yet, even standing up looking at the confetti. It's just, I'm just still waiting for it to really kick in. Um, but I mean, so many great players have passed this program and they've all come for the same reason that we have, to be coached by the greatest, um, to develop not only as a player, but just as a person, as a young woman. And so I think this is just, it's just an honor to be able to do this for her and with her. Next question is from Teresa. Teresa, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Teresa Walker, the Associated Press. You know, Haley, uh, so much has happened in the last couple of years. No tournament last year. You were hurt last year. And now to get here and to make those big shots that you've made here in these last two games, uh, how have you had a chance to let it soak in at all? How to have, to have the chance to make those shots in these moments? 
Yeah, I mean, I just owe it to my teammates. Um, they have so much, we have so much trust in each other. And uh, even when I don't have confidence in myself, I can look to them and they have confidence in me. And I mean, the whole game, Alyssa Jerome, I didn't have the best first half. I got in foul trouble, uh, which hurt me, hurt the team. And so I knew in the second half I had to get it back. And so Alyssa Jerome was just telling me like, this is your half, like, this is you, this is all you, this is your time. And um, they just kept instilling me with their confidence that they had. Uh, so down the stretch, I just knew if the ball came to me. Um, I knew I had to shoot it, um, and I had the confidence in myself to make those shots. So, I mean, I just owe it to them for instilling that when I don't even have it in myself. Next question is from Steve. Steve, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Yeah, Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Congratulations, Haley. When you play the game long enough, watch the game long enough, you pretty much can tell when a, when a player releases his or her shot if it's going to go in. So when Ari let that shot go, um, in the final seconds, did you have a pretty good sense it was off the mark, or did you think it had a pretty good chance to go? Oh, I had no idea. I just, I was just like, oh, please, God, don't go in. Um, I saw we had like three people on her. They were suffocating her. She's a great player. That had to be done. We knew she was going to be the one taking the shot. So, honestly, you never know. She's made some wild shots because she's just that great. So, I mean, um, you, you hope it doesn't go in. I didn't really have an idea. When the buzzer went off, I didn't really realize what happened. I think if you go back and watch, I just kind of stood there for a second. It just hadn't clicked that we actually just won and that the shot didn't go in. So I really had no thoughts. My mind was completely blank when she shot the ball. I was just like, I mean, there's three people there. That's all you can do. Um, it's not up to us anymore at that point. Next question is from Michelle. Michelle, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Yeah, it's Michelle Vogel from ESPN.com. Um, Haley, um, Teresa asked you a little bit about, you know, what you've gone through. Being being hurt last year, you, you know, your freshman season, can you talk about just rebuilding your confidence, rebuilding everything maybe, you know, from then and just what it means now to be in this position? Yeah, uh, that injury, it was heartbreaking. I'd never been injured before like that. So uh, it was very difficult. And then uh, the season got cut short. So that didn't only impact just the, e the season being cut short, but with my physical therapy and rehab and everything like that, campus was shut down. So I had to go home. So it was very difficult. Um, but I mean... I just had a great support system, and I think a lot of my confidence just came from working back to the basics, back to the fundamentals over the summer. Like, I'm not I'm not really, like, a crazy shifty player anyways. I'm not like that, but um, I was getting back to the basics, and I think that I found confidence form shooting, doing basic ball handling drills. Um, the Steph Curry ball handling drill that we do every day at practice, I did it every day at home. I was uh, dribbling in my garage with my mom, having her pass from the stairs, just doing all the little stuff to – both find the love for my game again, because um, when you get injured, it's hard, and you wonder why you're still doing it. And then with the season, there was no season in sight. So you kind of lose faith, and why, why am I doing this? Where's the motivation coming from? So just kind of doing the little things with the people that I love around me um, just kind of helped me gain the passion for the game again. And then my confidence just kind of came from there. Next question is from Jacob. Jacob, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Jacob Rayburn, Cardinal Sports Report. Haley, you talked about Alyssa picking you up. Can you talk a bit about how it feels to, as a team and, and also individually, to have picked up Kiana? Yeah, I mean, um, Key, Alyssa, and Anna are amazing leaders. Uh, last year, we had some great leaders, but I think this year our team is even closer, and we owe that all to them. And uh, they are each different leaders in different ways. Um, but I think, you know, Key, she always lifts us up. Um, I have a turnover, she's like, okay, get it back. Like, I need you, hey, whatever. So if she's not, you know, having the best game, it's fine. We, I still have confidence that every time Key shoots the ball, I think it's going in. And sometimes I get yelled at because I'm not crashing the old boards, but I'm like, Tara, I, I think it's going in. And that's just how much confidence we all have in her. And so, but even when she's not playing her best, we know that she's still going to do everything that she can to um, help the team win because she's just that unselfish. Um, she wants the best for the team. Um, but I mean, I think that she's, she's just an amazing person and an amazing player. And we just have so much confidence in her no matter what's going on in the game, um, just because we know her and we love her. Next question is from Nancy. Nancy, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Haley, it's Nancy Armour with USA Today Sports. Um, I'm just curious, you, you were asked on the floor um, if the, the road trip was worth it. And I'm just wondering if you could put in perspective 
what the season has been like for you all, whether it's, you know, the fact you didn't play at home, the fact you haven't seen your families, you played in, you practiced in a gym with wooden backboards and you still wind up winning the national title. So what is, what's the whole journey been like for you guys? I mean, it's been chaotic, hectic, um, but I think, I mean, it was crazy. We Tara just talked about in the locker room today um, how she didn't tell us it was going to be a 10-week journey. She said, okay, you're going to have one week in Vegas, and then who knows? And you're going to have one week in Arizona. You're going to have a week in L.A. Um, but it was just a long, very difficult journey. Um, being on the road, sleeping, out of, sleeping in hotels, living out of your bag, it's just a lot. You're on the bus, you're on planes all the time. And there's just never really an end in sight. So it was difficult. But I think from that experience and losing on the road um, and dropping one at home, I think it just really kind of grew this extra like chip on our shoulder almost. I don't know if that's the right word. It was like we just had something extra to us this year. And so I think it came from just being resilient from all the different things that we went through. Um, so I think that now as we came through the tournament, you know, I don't think we showed our best in – all the games and any of the games, I don't think we really were like, okay, this is the best game we've ever played. Um, I think that we had good halves, we had good moments, we had great moments. But I think it just shows that we're gonna tough it out, we're gonna stick with it, we're resilient, we're gritty. Um, Tara and Kate always say, no more nice girls from Stanford. I think we showed that we're tough and we're gritty, we're resilient. Um, so yeah, I think we just learned so much from the tough journey that we've been on this year and I mean we came into the season saying we want to win a natty and uh, we stuck with it in all the ups and the downs and all the face of adversity we we stuck with it next question is from Michelle Michelle please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation hi Haley Michelle Smith from Pac12.com this is actually a good segue into what I wanted to ask the last three games the Louisville game you've got to come back South Carolina game, this game, like it was, it, you guys had to like gut it out and gut check a whole lot of times. Did you wonder how many more gut checks you guys had left after, you know, when you're in the second half and they're running at you again? No. Um, personally, I, uh, I think that I was very confident in the team and confident in myself that no matter what punches were going to be thrown, we were ready. So, I mean, if that was Arizona going on a run because we're turning it over, I try to pull the team together and I'm like, guys, like this is our game. We're, this isn't, this is, this is nothing compared to what we've been through. This is ours. We're not going to stop fighting. And Lexi, the whole game is just, this is us. Come on. We got 40 more minutes, 30 more minutes. We're just talking about how, excuse me, sorry. We're just talking about how, um, this is the last time that we have together on the court. So no matter what punches are thrown at us, um, our confidence never wavered the entire game. Um, so yeah, I think we just stayed very level-headed, poised and patient. So. Next question is from Danny. Danny, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. And this will be our last question. Well, Haley, I guess be the last person to say congratulations on winning the national championship. Uh, Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion. In that final huddle, what did Tara tell you guys in the final huddle about the final play uh, with the last six seconds? What did she say in the huddle? Um, it was just to lock in. Um really just play defense, talk, communicate, switch. This is the last six seconds you have as a team. So uh, you want to leave it all out there on the line. Um, we knew who the shot, the, whose ball, whose hands the ball was going to be in, who was going to take the last shot. So we just had to lock in and focus and communicate. And I think that uh, we executed in, the, in those last six seconds as best as we could. Haley, congratulations. And thank you for participating tonight. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your night. We will now be joined by Kiana Williams. Please use your raise hand function to indicate if you would like to ask a question. We are now joined by Kiana Williams, and your first question will be from Chantel Jennings. Chantel, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Kiana, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Congratulations on the win. The necklace looks nice. Um, 11 different players played tonight for you guys. I'm just curious, how important was the depth of this team, not only in what you guys did tonight, but just in getting through this season? 
Um, that, that's what we hanged our, our hats on all year long. Um, uh, every game, someone different stepped up. Um, and I'm super proud of, uh, you know, all 12 of my teammates. I know Agnes didn't go in, but I know she was ready. And, you know, next year I feel like she's going to be a breakout year for her. Um, but, but like you said, we, we needed uh, all 11 players that, that stepped in and, and Agnes on the bench cheering for us. Uh, we, we really hang our hats on, you know, re relying on, on one another. Next question is from Sue. Sue, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, hi, Kiana. Sue Favor, Women's Hoops World. Congratulations. Um, I remember at the end of the Pac-12 tournament, you did vow to all of us uh, that you, were, you guys were going to be the last team standing. Was there ever a time during this tournament that you doubted that? And then how, how did you, uh, how were you able to stay so poised when things got really pressured at the end? Uh, I never, never doubted this team for, for one minute. Um, you know, Tara kept telling us uh, uh, after every practice, you know, in the in locker room and in between games and stuff that we're the best team here and we just have to go out there and prove it. Um, I feel like we were ranked number one for a reason, but also rankings don't matter. Um, the entire tournament was in one location, so no one really had an advantage. Although, you know, this is my hometown, so I feel like we were the home team. Um, but, you know, we just have to go out there and, and give it our all and fight. Um, these, these last three, three games, they were dog fights, and we just came out on top because we, we wanted it more. Next question is from Daniel. Daniel, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Kiana. It's Daniel Martinez, kind of Smith Stanford Daily. Just want to ask, how good does it feel to get this done for Coach Vanderveer? Oh, it, it feels great um, to, to end a drought for her, to win this in my home city for her. Um, it, it's a great feeling. Uh, I'll share a quick story. Um, she, she's probably going to get mad, but uh, when we were um, in September, when we first got back to campus, uh, we all got in trouble for breaking quarantine. Um, we were supposed to be, you know, in isolation for five days. And, you know, on the fourth day, we, we went to a, a, a gym off campus to, to play pickup. And um, when she found out, she was just so heartbroken and, and disappointed. And I felt like um, the only way to make up for that is to win a national championship for her. So me, Anna, and Liz, um, you know, we, we said from there on out, we we're going to be better leaders, um, you know, follow the rules, follow protocol. And to, to win this natty and, you know, to look back on that, that experience um, and having that feeling to, to now – I'm extremely proud of this team. And I also want to add, I feel like it was worth it going to play those pickup games. <laughs> All right, the next question is from Sunil. Sunil, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Sunil Sundaraj with Global Women's Sports Radio. Congratulations, Kiana, on the title. I had to ask you uh, about the balance scoring. It's, a, you know, different players stepping up. I mean, talk about Haley, I mean, what a role she's been on, uh, you know, 41 points in her last two games, I think our fifth straight game in double figures. Uh, tonight, you know, Lexi and Cameron with 10 points apiece. Can you just talk about that, you know, aspect of the game, this, you know, team, you know, said really coming, you know, together here, especially, you know, during the tournament. Thank yeah, you. yeah, the last two games uh, I've struggled, um, but but credit to Arizona and South Carolina. Their, their defenses were, you know, uh, took me out of my, my comfort zones and uh, some easy looks that I usually get. I, I didn't get any easy looks. So, you know, Haley took on that scoring role. Um, Lexi took up on that scoring role. Cam played really well tonight. Um, and that just goes back to the first question, you know. Uh, we always have someone that steps up, and I think that's why we were so talented and successful this year, um, you know. The scoring load wasn't just solely on me. You know, I don't have to score 20 points for us to, to win in, in that show tonight. Next question is from Michael. Michael, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. All right, uh, Michael Robertson, African American athlete. So, Kiana, of course, we talked earlier about your pride in not turning the ball over. Pretty tough game the last two games. So, even though you're elated to get this championship, but was it somewhat bittersweet that? You didn't have to perform the way you wanted to at home. And how grateful are you to Haley for stepping up the way she did? Oh, extremely grateful for Haley. Uh, she, she's, she's a pro. She's a pro as a sophomore. Uh, I feel like she can make a WNBA team right now. Uh, just, you know, with her skill set, her ability to make plays. And she, she got her three ball going. So that's going to be huge for her next season. Um, and, and like you said, yeah, I really hang my hat on not turning the ball over. But, you know, I, I knew coming in, you know, I watched a lot of video. I knew they were going to be trapping. Uh, it was just some plays I was trying to force things that weren't there. Or a few times I, I you know, dribbled myself into a trap, into a turnover. So I'm just for sure going to going to rewatch this game and, and um, learn from it in, in last game as well. 
Next question is from Joshua. Joshua, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Joshua Louder, Joshua Louder Television Network. Counter, congratulations on the win. What seemed to be the motivating factor throughout the season and also throughout the tournament? Uh, I'll say just what we've been through. Um, I don't think any other team um, in this tournament had to, you know, live in, live out of a suitcase, live out, live out of a hotel for, for 10 weeks uh, during the season. Um, and we had to do that because that's how bad we wanted to play. Uh, we couldn't play uh, at, at Stanford, at our, our arena, at Maples. So, you know, we had to go elsewhere. You know, we went to Vegas. Then we were in, uh, you know, L.A. Um, then we were at the Warriors um, facility. So just the adversity that we, we've been through this entire year, um, just how bad we wanted it because we didn't want to go through all that for, for no reason. Next question is from Lindsay. Lindsay, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Kiana, Lindsay Schnell from USA Today. Congratulations. Um, I just wondered, so we talked earlier this week, last week, whatever, that you haven't hugged your parents since mid-September. So as soon as you guys are done with this, all this post-game stuff, do you get to go hug them or still not? Do you have to get back on a plane without hugging them? No, I'm actually going to stay home. Um, I'm not going to fly back with the team. Um, so hopefully I get to hug my mom. If not tonight, for sure tomorrow. I'll get to see my family tomorrow. So uh, super excited about that. But I'm for sure going to, you know, enjoy this, this, this last night with my teammates and my, and my coaches. Next question is from Ariel. Ariel, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, my name is Arielle Chambers, and you can call me Ari, but I'm with Highlight Her. And I know, Kiana, that you guys like to say that winning a national championship is indescribable, but I want you to try. What does it feel like winning a national championship? Uh, it's it's a great feeling. Um, you know, just looking back on the season, everything that we've been through, um, you know, that, that incident I, I described when we first got back to campus, um, you know. Just, you were risky. You were risky. <laughs> yeah, we were. Um, but, you know, just everything that we've been through, it, it just feels like it was worth it. Um, to, to win this for Tara at, in the same year that she's become the all-time winningest coach, um, it just it just means everything. Um, and, and to win it in my hometown, that, that means a lot. I know my teammates wanted this as bad as I did, you know, my senior year in my hometown. So just everything just lined up, and I just feel like it was it was already written. And to, to win it on Easter, on Easter Sunday, that, that's just God. That's incredibly dope. Congrats to you. Thank you. We have time for one more question, and it's from Steve. Steve, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. From San Francisco Chronicle, congratulations. Um, I mentioned, asked this to Haley as well. You play basketball long enough, you watch basketball long enough. A lot of times you know when a shooter lets go of the shot, whether that ball's going in or not. So when Ari let go of that shot in the last couple seconds, did you think it was going in? Did you not think it was going in? What was going through your mind there? Um, I don't even think I was thinking at that moment. Um, she, I knew she had a tough look. Um, but when I saw it, it go, it had a really good chance to go in. Um, but, you know, she's just a great player. Um, after the game, I just congratulated her on leading her team to the national championship game when, when nobody thought they would do it. Um, I, I just congratulated her on, a, on an excellent career. Um, and, you know, she's really turned around the Arizona program, and it was really inspiring to watch from, from a distance. And she's a great competitor. She, she brings the best out of me and out of, out of uh, you know, other people that she plays against. So I just congratulated her on a, on a great year. You know, that, that shot, I, I know we, we had to make it tough for her. We had three people on her because that's how good she is. Um, but I was for sure scared for, for a minute when it left her hands. Kiana, congratulations, and thank you for your time. Sweet. Thank you. Happy Easter, everyone.